All right, let's move on to one hell of a performance that we wanted to dig into today. It's our rookie quarterback spotlight of the week, and we're going to talk about C.J. Stroud. What a day for C.J. Stroud on Sunday against the Jags. 20-30, 280, two touchdowns. And I don't even think that stat line does justice to the way that he played I thought it in the was game. More, yeah, I thought it was more yards and like more. Like I, 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 I totally agree with you. And there were so many aspects to that game that stood out to me when I rewatched it. I, I, where do you even want to start? What, what in your mind was the most impressive thing that you saw him do on Sunday? The most impressive part of that performance? Um, just that it, it's very difficult for rookie quarterbacks to do a lot of things and play fast. And the biggest thing, though, is is get, getting through progressions. Like, and that's what that's what people in the building have told me too. Like, they are super impressed with how he's able to see a defense and process it in his head and get through his progressions. One, two, three, not open. Like he made a throw that won't go down. And I mean, you're just like it's 11 yard completion, but he made a throw where he got through one and two and the pocket was closing in. And I'm like, and he had to step up and a lot of guys would just dirt it. He somehow found three on the left sideline, just sitting there and threw it out. And it was 11 yard gain second along first down. Like that was the that, first play that jumped out to me. It, it, the, yeah. There's a botched jet motion on that play. So yeah, well, the timing he, sna- he, he, snapped off, it, he snapped it too early. Yeah. That. That's that. Yeah. That might be on him, but there yeah. are so many things that could have gone wrong on that play. There's a botched jet yes, motion. There's penetration on the right side. He has to slide in the pocket and not even did he buy himself time. He still tried to read the play out. He yeah, still went he to number two corner route. Yeah. His check down. Mm-hmm. I, that play was so impressive to me. Yeah. And just the, the willingness to kind of hang in there and go through the entire play, not even not just panic, but still yeah. read out the play was unbelievably impressive. But a lot of quarterbacks might, that, that, that is impressive. But what's more impressive about him is a lot of quarterbacks would go through and sit in the pocket and read through progressions, but they wouldn't get through it quickly. So they might get to one to two, and you might try to get to three, but you might get sacked because eh, eh, time's up, two and a half seconds, you're done. What, what's impressive, like he's able to understand what defenses are doing because he's really smart. Everything I've heard, like I was, ju- I was literally just texting the OC or the pass game coordinator, like about him, like bro, give me something. Like, and he's just like, dude, he's so smart. Like he's so smart, which is like, not, I mean, it's impossible. Like I, you know, Wonderlick, whatever. Like it's just it's hard to tell until you get a guy in the building getting guy in the offense and also like it, what stuck out to me what stood out to me um which maybe not stood out to you but like he's out there i mean they're they have run to run kills in that offense and that 49er offense was slow like to me i saw a couple times where i'm like oh they better not run right they better not run right they run our outside zone right and he's alert 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 he's yeah alerting it left there a couple of times like yeah that's just it seems so easy to a to a to a team or to a audience that's watching but like some some of these and I know this because I know the offense some of these run to run progressions and kills is what we call it like killing a play to get to another play um a lot of these are like hey is is this three tech is this a three technique or is this a two i It's not like, hey, safety down, we're going this way. Some of it is, but a lot of it's like, hey, you need a three-tech and a nine-tech only to run this trap play. And that's that's the only way to run it. So he's looking at multiple things because it's a very intense offense like that. But he was able to to do that. And that that to me is like, hey, like you can trust, you can trust the guy. Like he's he's in his playbook, he's learning it, he's smart. Obviously, he's thrown for like over 900 yards or whatever it is in three games. I mean, it's 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 impressive. The most encouraging part to me is that we always knew he could throw it. I mean, you watch his tape at Ohio State. I mean, he was the most accurate quarterback in the draft. He has a ton of arm talent. His ability to layer throws to the second level was it was really impressive in college. I think remains impressive, but he was never under pressure in college. It was like 24% of his snaps. He's got two starters in the NFL right now as rookies, one of whom is playing very well in Arizona. The other is a fourth round pick that is played just fine in spot duty in Cleveland. And we didn't know what he would look like when the game got dirtier and when the pocket got muddier and he had to navigate that space. And that was one of the most impressive things he did on Sunday. That play we're talking about with the check down, he has to slide in the pocket. There was another one in the first half where it's play action. He comes off the inbreaker, slides in the pocket to his right, and then with anticipation on time, 
throws the out to Robert Woods mm, yeah. and before he's out of his break. And so yeah. the arm talent was obvious always, but his ability to navigate the pocket, especially when that gets crowded, that's already stood out. And I think that was one of the biggest questions people had about him coming out. Yeah. And that, that was literally, I have it like bolded and circled in my notes was tight pocket, tight window throws. And that's, that's the NFL. Like the NFL is a dirty pocket at all times. And it's the, t the windows that he's throwing to, like he's fitting some balls in there that maybe some guys are like, ah, it's covered. He's like, no, nah, I'm trusting it. And, and eventually there's going to be one that pops up and tipped. And he had, he had one that he tried to, he didn't layer enough over that line yeah. that should have got picked off, but dude, it's, it happens. But uh, the one even you're that talking play, about, though, yeah. even that play that almost got picked off, the reason he throws that is because he knows the linebacker is supposed to take the cheese on the underneath yeah. route. Like yeah, he, and the linebackers like he, made a good play. Yeah. He understood the structure of the yeah. defense, and that's why he made the decision. Even that well, wasn't that bad. In the in the play in the play, it's so funny because I I I I wrote down a, a bunch of plays, but the play you're talking about where he hits Robert Woods on um an out route on the right sideline, and it's like a 20 yard comeback route. I literally, I literally texted my guy at Houston and like videoed, I videoed this play and I sent it to him as I'm talking, like I'm breaking it down on Twitter or whatever. And I'm like, oh my gosh, because it's, they call it like a slim route. It's a five step slant off heavy play action in the pistol. And it was straight covered. And usually on the backside, it's either like a dig, a sit or a comeback. And I'm like, I'm like, as I'm filming this and talking, I'm like, you guys decided to give him a 20 yard comeback. Like you couldn't get an in another in breaker. Like that was your, <laughs> that was your option. And sure enough, like in time, in rhythm, I'm like, dude, he got through that progression so fast. What? Like you guys got a guy like, cause you know, you know, if NFL guys are sending it back and forth, it's like, it's impressive, like super impressive. The most impressive throw he made in that game, in my opinion, might've been the one that was incomplete to Nico Collins. There was a throw on third down where yeah. it was he was running like a little bender and he throws it when he can barely see the receiver and it hits him in the hands and yeah. Nico gets up and and he does that that's on me like I I, I should have had I mean, that one he, he so tried to fit that one in there because it was a weird coverage it was like what we call three but like the the the, the trips is to the right. Nico's uh, tight split single receiver, I think, and they're like in three buzz with the safety's coming down and mm -hmm. the backside, the backside. So he's thinking in his mind, CJ Stroud's thinking in his mind, hey, my three buzz beater is backside on this little post, little wrap route. But what he didn't, I don't think he saw was like the guy was pressing Nico Collins. And so Nico's like running at a man beater. But CJ's like, no, bro, like you're my single high beater, man beater, or zone beater. Like you got to win. And he threw it and I was like, whoa like as like i'm i'm like watching it like wow and he actually I, I i had to rewind it and he actually fit it in there and i'm like oh all right and then i saw nico like it's on me as on me but like just just i mean processing all that information like i'm telling it to you he's going through it in about 10 seconds like hey i see a big hole here strong side it's got to be three buzz based on film study i'm going back to my slant route backside or my in route wrap route whatever and to actually do that and process it over and over and over again uh on the road in a tough environment against a division opponent it was impressive there was one last play that really stood out to me and it's a comparison that i actually made before the draft and i think that after watching this game i feel pretty decent about it he had like an out and up from the pocket and threw a ball to dalton schultz at the pylon right before dalton schultz even turned around yeah. and they barely missed it and my his reaction was incredible because he wanted that play Solid. so bad and yeah. understandable because it would have been an incredible play <sighs> But the pocket movement and then even the way that he was moving with the ball, like the way that we had two hands on the ball. Yeah. He looked exactly like Joe Burrow. Like the, in that moment, he looked exactly yeah. like Joe Burrow. That and coming good. out of the draft, when I was watching him, it's like they're both 6'3", incredible accuracy. And when I watched that entire – and I think in our pre-draft podcast, the way, way that I framed it is the be, his best case scenario is Joe Burrow. Let's say it happens 20% of the time. And when I watched that game on Sunday, those are the vibes that I got. It was very yeah. much Joe Burrow vibes. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That, that's good because I I, 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 I definitely see that now that you're talking about. I know the exact play you're talking about. Um, it was a, it was a good throw, maybe an inch outside, and and Dalton should have caught it. But it just how he stepped up and just. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to like what I said. Like, just is he's smooth. He he's like smooth, and he's not 
super antsy back there. And, and honestly, like this early in his career, that's hard to teach. So you think it's going to be that way. Backup offensive lineman in the game. Yeah. Right now. See, I didn't even know that. That would, which Four. makes it even more impressive. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not good. <laughs> How quickly do you know if a guy's a guy? Like when you watch that game in your mind, is it like he just got it? Or do we need to see more before you're willing to say something like that? I think, I mean, I need to see, I need to see more. Um, it, it's easy for, for anyone to see a rookie quarterback have success early and say, he's got it, you know, but there's been so many guys who have had success and maybe it's like one off and then just like, but I do think like he's, he's starting on the right path, man. Like, like it's, it's such a different story than the other two rookies right now. Cause Bryce young has been hurt. Anthony Richardson, hopefully coming back this week, concussion, but played well the one and a half games or whatever he played. Um, but I would say it's too early to tell. And and I would say that if Houston was pick, I mean, what I've seen, like if Houston was picking one, I think they would have chose CJ Stroud. I mean, I think they're really happy with who they got. I thought he was the best quarterback. If I yeah. was picking number one, he's the guy I would have chosen because I thought his floor was really high. And now I think we're seeing again yeah. if this is if he can have that kind of Joe Burrow like profile to his game. Man, if he could be Joe Burrow, yeah, that's a hell of a pick. I mean, it's a very it's a it, it is one hell of a pick. The other yeah. the last thing I wanted to say, and this is such a stupid point, but I thought he did such a great job of getting the ball out on screens and against free rushers. No, yeah, like just no. the way he was putting touch on some of those throws. Not everyone can do that, and not everyone is calm enough to make those plays in those situations. He made four or five of those in this game where he's just popping the ball over somebody or yeah. throwing that sidearm around somebody. And I was like, it's just a good way of operating. Like every well, element and, of who he yeah. was in that game was impressive. And it's a good observation by you because I don't think it's a dumb point. I'm glad you made it up because um, the screen, the, yeah, obviously the screen throws, like you got to be like, it's either like a dart or a free throw is what you said. Like if it's a dart, you're throwing between guys. If it's a free throw, you're throwing over guys. And he had all those throws. <laughs> Like darter free throw. But what I was most impressed about and what I was texting my guy in Houston about was like, I got excited about the two plays. I think it was like the second drive or third drive where they ended up throwing a touchdown on the corner route. Um, but he got, he got zeroed the first time in the game down there in the high red zone. And they, he, he just calmly caught the snap free rusher in his face and just whoop, on a little slant route to the right. Okay. First down, it was like second 11. I'm like, Oh, Okay, yeah. like he had a plan for it. He saw it. He knew what to do. And then they zeroed him again three plays later, and he stayed calm and didn't make the best throw, but like it doesn't have to be the best throw if it's caught, right? Like he he was like falling back, free free rusher in his face, and threw a corner out for a touchdown. And that's what I said. I, like I was like, dude, you guys got back-to-back -back zeros almost, and then you made them pay, Okay. And then they didn't do it again. So that scared him off from doing that. That's a rookie quarterback saying, hey, I can handle the zero. I know what you got. Here's what I got. That was impressive to me. The last thing I wanted to ask you, the touchdown that he threw to Tank Dell. What are the Jags doing on that play? I uh, no clue. I, I no was clue. trying to figure out. I was like, it was it cover three? Is is he supposed to be the post safety, but he's hanging out at the line of scrimmage? So, and if he is, why didn't he run no, back you're, right you're, away? You're, you're saying so. You're, you're it was down the at the one. It was it wasn't oh, it was the down at the right? one or whatever. Yeah. Down at the one. The okay, long okay, completion okay. Tank down. Um, yeah, the long completion take down. So no, it, that's that's another thing. Like like the Jaguars completely screwed up their uh, rotation on that play. So you see the left safety um, with Dreads. He's down and he's like, no, you, he's pointing to the other safety. No, you go back, you go back. And he understood, he, like, he gets it. And he's like, oh, no. And he's running back. And they actually have, like, the perfect play on it where he's – CJ Stroud is literally supposed to come off play action. It's heavy play action. It's two-man route. It's a deep over and a post. Everyone in the league runs it. It's not hard, but it's very successful. And your eyes off that fake, when you're faking, you're, you're supposed to come up and you're supposed to locate the free safety in single high coverage. Okay, so when you locate the free safety in single high coverage – you need to make a really quick judgment. Is the free safety driving the over route or is he staying back? If he's staying back, I'm throwing the over. If he's driving the over, I'm letting the, letting the post launch. And so he comes out the fake and he's like, 
Oh my God. Where's the free safety? There's, there, there's there was no one no there. <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, I'm launching this. And then it ends up being like an amazing throw because the corner actually drop kicked is what we call it. And the safety somehow was on the ball and almost made the play. Um, but he saw it and he made him pay. And that's, that's something that to me is, was, was cool to see because if I, I've, I've been on those a couple times where the defense is like so screwed up and you just sort of freak out and you're just like, Oh, check down. When reality, just like let it play out, let it play out, and just launch Ola, and that's what he did. It was it was cool. It was funny because I think he noticed it before the play, and it seemed like he was trying to get to the top of his drop as fast hurry, as hurry, possible hurry. in yes. order to just get it and let it rip, which was very yeah. funny to watch. But yeah. that little bit of recognition, I think, again, speaks to how locked in he was over the course of that game. <laughs>